Shifting my wardrobe from summer to fall is always a challenge. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high quality items I adore, ensuring my wardrobe stays fresh and I don't blow my budget. Like cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. The best part, all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts the cost of the middleman and passes on the savings to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. Listen, I really have enjoyed the cashmere sweaters I've gotten as well as a pair of pants. And I'm going to tell you, they are matched right with all the quality of the other things that I've uh, purchased. It's been great. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high quality closet essentials. Go to Quince.com slash Corp for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash Corp to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash corp you're listening to we ain't dying for this a black woman's guide to liberation and i'm your host crystal johnson we are a community of black women demanding our collective liberation through radically soft living each week we share the stories of black women who have set themselves free from the expectations of others and are living on their own terms um, but welcome to the first episode of We Ain't Dying for This, a Black Woman's Guide to Liberation. Okay, okay, Not folks. We... <laughs> okay, so uh, welcome to the first episode of We Ain't Dying for This, a Black Woman's Guide to Liberation. I am Crystal Johnson, pronouns she and her, and founder of Design Your Soft Life. Um, I created this platform because I feel like uh, liberation is different for everyone. And I felt like it would be important for all of us to hear different stories from Black women who have liberated themselves in some sort of way. Um, And so I'm so excited to welcome Asia Rutledge to the episode today where we're going to be talking about trauma recovery as liberation. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. We laughed the other day because this episode is only 30 minutes. <laughs> There's so many things that we may want to discuss in this time together, uh, but trust that the conversations will continue. Uh, we'll continue posting online, interacting uh, on LinkedIn. And of course, we're gonna share with you all how you can stay in touch with Asia beyond this episode. So your bio. So Asia is a transformation coach focused on trauma recovery, who creates space for people to learn to live in alignment with self by healing their trauma. She was her own first client after her body gave out four years ago. After having several doctors tell her that she was fine, she took her health into her own hands, which led to uncovering unaddressed trauma and its massive impacts on the mind and body. And I don't think that 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 story is different from a lot of people who have experienced something similar where they're sick and they don't know why they're sick um, until they get out of maybe a situation that they're currently in or they heal themselves from, as you mentioned, the, the trauma that they've experienced previously in their lifetime. So I stumbled across your LinkedIn page. And it's funny because I feel like, you know, when you put things out in the atmosphere, Somehow you injure people. And Mm -hmm. I put this series out and said, okay, like we're going to have this episode. And I didn't have a guest. I had some (laughs) idea (laughs) of who I might want to talk to, but I didn't actually have any guests. Um, So I found you after posting it. And I was like, yes, like this is exactly what it is that I'm talking about. These are the types of things that I think that people would want to hear. So what drew me in was the power of trauma recovery to to liberate us. And then I later learned that you actually don't even live in the U.S. anymore. You have black sitted up out of here. So hopefully we have the opportunity to talk about that a bit. Um, But first, let's start with you sharing your story. So your bio mentioned that your body gave out four years ago. Can you tell us more about that moment and what led to it? Yeah, it was um, kind of like everything converging at once, right? So prior to that, my health had slowly been just giving me weird 
signs, nothing to say you're sick or anything. I just didn't feel good. Like, I think a lot of us might feel like that was just like, I just don't feel like I have energy or I just don't feel just good. And, but there was nothing concrete and that had been going on for some years. And then um, the year prior to COVID, uh, we had some internal family situation going on, which led me and my siblings to break contact with my mother. And that was very traumatic. And then COVID hit. And at the time, I didn't know it, but that also was very re-triggering to some childhood stuff. So at that point, I was um, I went to see a naturopath and she had given me some stuff to detox. And literally the very first night, I had insomnia. I could not um, take things that I used to be able to take. I was very sensitive. And just my whole body changed. Everything switched and it never went back um, until I started doing a whole bunch of work. So it was very, that in itself was very traumatizing because I did not know what was going on. I had been awake for eight days at the point that I was like, somebody put me in a hospital and just make my body sleep because I don't know what's going on and you're not giving me any answers. And so it was from there where I was like, I got to figure this out because I can't live like this. So um, yeah, it was just a, it was a convergence of all the things. And when I finally got a handle on what was going on, the core of it was trauma. And so the healing was digging into the trauma and working on my body and healing all of that from what had been sitting in it for over 40 years at this point. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because I think usually when we think about trauma, we go to the extreme. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I was adopted at two weeks old and my parents, my adopted parents are much older uh, in age. And the difference between me and my closest sibling is eight years. So prior to me kind of addressing some of my own stuff, I would have never acknowledged that I had any trauma because I'm like, oh, my parents were great. Like I was adopted, you know, like they were good to me. They were nice and they loved me. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is that I did have trauma. So my parents worked a lot. Um, they weren't around very much. So like when I was in school and I had things that would happen, you know, like band or track or cheerleading, they never were able to show up for those things because they were working and then they were just emotionally unavailable. My mom mm -hmm. believed she literally worked herself to death. Oh, I'm, she yeah, I, she, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> but that's so the she, thing, like most people don't think they have trauma because they think it's something like a car accident or, you know, mm -hmm. you were molested or like something like that, where it's what I consider, um, you know, trauma is it could be like you know say somebody was slicing your fingers with a paper cut every single day like imagine how that's going to impact you in 10 20 30 years that's what you know childhood neglect or um you know just emotional unavailable parents or just a number of things when all that stuff just piles up especially as a child because you have no escape and you don't know how to process it all piles up and it all impacts you as an adult if you haven't addressed it or not aware of what's going on. So yeah, traumas, they call it big T and little t. And big T is the stuff we think that's trauma. But little t is the little traumas that are going on day to day that you might not realize. And the thing about trauma is it's all about how you are able to cope and if somebody is there supporting you. So you and I could be in the same space and go through the same thing and I might leave traumatized and you might not, right? So everything is not necessarily traumatizing to everybody. But again, to your point, it doesn't have to be these massive things that we only think of just as, you know, what we consider, oh, I'm not traumatized because that didn't happen to me. Right. Well, how does it show up as we grow into adults and we have these habits that we created as children to keep us safe? But then when we're adults, how does it impact the way that we move about in the world? Oh, man. I mean, it's, it could be in so many ways, right? Depending on your specific situation, how you had to protect yourself, how people 
we're doing different things around you, right? But, you know, even stuff as simple as like, if you're trying to have a conversation with somebody, I'm sure we've all had this experience, you have a conversation with somebody and then the, the immediately they're blaming you back. And it's like, wait, what? Like, I'm just trying to tell you how I feel. Like, how did we get to now you blaming me back? And, you know, I'm not gonna say that's automatically from trauma, but a lot of that is, it's like they feel shame, they feel um, attacked, even though you're not attacking them, like this is their perception of the world, right? So they, their lens sees it that way. And so they're automatically jumping back and fighting back. And it's like, wow, what happened with that? So um, it could be stuff like that. It could be stuff like work where you might know that you're under serving and you um, are capable than way more, but you won't go out for another job because you don't believe you deserve it or you're too scared to speak up or you know you qualify, but you don't believe anybody else will think you're qualified. Like you're making decisions for other people without even trying to let them have the chance to say what they think, right? That type of thing. Or something I used to do all the time was like, I thought that people were always talking about me, like not in a bad, like just if something happened, I thought it was my fault. If somebody was upset, I'm like, oh, they must be upset at me, even though I didn't do anything, <laughs> right? But it's like, oh, they must know. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it's like all these little ways that this stuff can show up in our adult lives and impact us. And we don't even realize that it's stemming from something else and that we actually could heal from it. And it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to live like this. Yeah, this is true. I have definitely had a lot of those experiences where I'm with my partner and somehow like their mood is off and I'm like, well, what did I do? Are you okay? Like, did I do something? And it's like, no, you didn't do anything. But I feel that way or I felt mm -hmm. that way because of trauma that I've had, you know, as a child, because of dealing with abandonment or like you said, like we talked about before, just parents that were emotionally unavailable, trying to figure it out, like making up the story. And that's another thing you said, too, that reminded me of something when we have had trauma where we have to like we feel like we have to put the story together. So yeah, we're, we're trying to remain safe. We're mm -hmm. always trying to remain safe. At the core, you're always trying to get back to safety. So all mm -hmm. of these things are just ways we've learned how to be safe. And when we were kids, they served us well. But now they're harming us, right? Now they're not serving us anymore. And so we have to learn new ways of being. But at the core of it, it's really just trying to get back to safety, and you're doing it in the way that you know how best, right? And so learning how to recover from your trauma is really learning how to uh, create real safety internally and know what that feels like so that you can actually be in the world in a way that is healthy and you're not creating these like false ways of creating safety where you actually know what safety actually feels like and you feel safe no matter what's going on around you. Basically, you don't have to manipulate the environment anymore to feel safe, right? And that's that's really what trauma recovery gets us to. Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into trauma recovery. So mm -hmm. you mentioned in one of your recent posts that you have the power to change your narrative and to create the life that you want, which I absolutely love. Design your thought life. Ah, <laughs> I mean, I love that you said that. So can you share more about how you recover from your own trauma and how you support your clients in doing the same. Yeah, so um, it does take work. <laughs> um, I'm definitely not a person who just is like, you know, it's all about the mindset and that's it. It's not, it's way more than that, right? It definitely takes work, but you do have the ability and the power to do it. And for me, when I went about, um, trying to understand what was going on with me, I learned a lot about the body and your nervous system and all the things that are happening in your body when your body's in fight or flight, when, you're, when your nervous system is dysregulated, because if you don't address those things, your body never gets to a state of calm and safety. So I learned how to get to a state of calm and safety. So I did a lot of like somatic work, which is um, body work, movement work, working with um, the emotions in the sense of like 
you guys can probably relate to this, like when you're a kid and maybe you were like really mad at your mom and you you were angry and you went and she, you know, you could never act angry with your mom, right? And so withholding all those emotions, they don't go anywhere, they stay stored. And so doing the work to get that stuff out. So like some of the somatic work is like literally acting out those emotions in a safe and healthy way, right? You might not go yell at a person, but you might go in your yard and like act out, you know, um, movements of anger and yell, right? So you can physically get it out of your body. So doing a lot of that work, doing a lot of work to get the emotions, the stuck emotions out of my body, doing a lot of mental uh, reprogramming in terms of like inner child work, compassion work with myself, um, re reframing how I see things, reframing how I think about things, um, and then really getting with people and understanding what safe people look like, what mm -hmm. safe people feel like. Um, and then being able to open up, you know, test the waters and open up with safe people. And, oh, look, I opened up and I told my truth and they didn't like call me stupid or they didn't, you know, smack me or right. And like, oh, this this is what safe people feel like. This is how safe people respond to you. Right. And so being able to be in community where you can practice those things and people will hold space for you and care for you. And you learn to feel differently, like what a safety feels like. Because unfortunately, if you're in an environment where it's not safe, you don't know what safety feels like. You could be sitting in safety and feel uncomfortable because you don't know what it feels like. Yeah, absolutely. I, um... Did I answer the question? I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just realized, did I answer the question? <laughs> Well, you answered most of it um, okay. <laughs> about like how you support your clients. I oh, heard you, okay. et cetera. But is there anything else that you would add that you do to support your clients? So if I was your client and I came to you um, and I shared about my childhood and some of the things that I've mentioned where, you know, I try to figure out what I did wrong if somebody else's mood is off because automatically mm -hmm. it's my fault. What are some of the things that you might do to support me as your client? Yeah, that's actually not where I'm going to start, though. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to take that and I'm going to hear everything you say, but that's not where I'm going to start. And where I'm going to start is actually um, slowing down. So the, the reason I say that is because you can't heal um, in the environment where you were harmed. And part of the issue is that we are so used to go, 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 go. And our body is actually not made to go at the speed that we go at anymore. And so for us to be able to heal, our physiology needs to get to a space that it feels safe and that it feels um, natural and that it feels that you're honoring it and respecting it. And so um, the first step is really like slow down. So some of the very first things would be stuff like take um, a slow walk every day and mm -hmm. um, don't have any goal, right? People, we, we're we always like trying to be productive, right? Don't be productive. I don't care how many calories you burn. I don't care how many miles you walk. I don't care, like go, I just want you to feel the ground. That's all I want, feel the ground and go slow and do that. So it would be doing some things that slow your body down so you can start to feel like, oh, it doesn't feel good when I'm always moving, right? And when your body starts to feel safe, we can start to work on those things. But if we're trying to work on those things while your body is still feeling chaotic inside, yeah, mentally you'll start doing the things, but it's not really healing, you know, the full body. And I'm very, very much a proponent that if you don't do the body work, you're not fully healing the trauma. So that's where I would start. I will also be looking at like, I don't do this, but I would coach you on like who, who you can talk to, provide resources around like, what do your minerals look like? What are your nutrients look like? Do you need to start um, taking stuff like magnesium 
and things mm-hmm. like that because that's that's the first thing that we burn when we're stressed out and we don't get a lot of magnesium because of how our soil is so we're usually depleted in magnesium um and it's critical in many things that happen in the body so getting your body to stability at the same time that we're working on getting your mind to stability so then we can start to address like more of those mental things that are going on yes yeah Yep. I see the comment intellectually. Yes. So everybody else can see it as well. <laughs> I That is really important to be able to slow down because I have someone who's very close to me who was going through this traumatic experience at work and they have some other trauma from when they were growing up as well. But it's like they couldn't even hear mm-hmm. the, like the solution or um, what it is that they could do to kind of disconnect themselves from the stuff because they were in it. So she actually had to take FMLA so -hmm. she could just be away from the situation. And when she was away from the situation, she was actually able to see, oh, I have so many more options. There's so many things that I do. Like I'm worthy, I have value and I don't need this. But when she was- It's hard when you- Couldn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you, you do, you have to, you have to get your body out of it. You have to slow down. Sometimes you have to be dramatic. You know, you, you, you mentioned, I don't even live in the States anymore. I mean, I'm dramatic. Y'all don't have to be dramatic like me, but that's a lot of why I moved, right? Like COVID was going on. I lived in Atlanta. They were not handling COVID the way I felt they should. I was feeling unsafe, right? Like I would have these thoughts. What happens to your body when you don't feel safe? in your house, you don't feel safe in your city, you don't feel safe in your state, you don't feel safe in your country. Like, what is the impact of that? And I would just have like ruminate on that all the time. And I was just, I just hit a point where I told my son, like, we gotta go. And so that was part of my healing. Like we moved by the beach and that was on purpose, right? Cause I know that when I'm struggling, water for me is like a, a healer. So I moved to the beach on purpose to go sit at the beach every day. Right. And like I said, everybody doesn't have to be like super over the top things like me. I'll do all the things. But the point is I changed the environment. Right. And so however you can change the environment so that you have the space and then you have the separation and you have the ability to slow down and be present in a different way. And then we're able to, because the other thing is sometimes you can talk about all the traumas and, but if you don't have the ability to integrate and process them, then the talking about it is not the helpful part, right? So that's why I believe it's a, it's a whole body experience and you can't just do the intellectualizing because that's what trauma has taught us to do. That's what society has taught us to do, to just intellectualize everything and not feel and we have to get back to feeling we have to get back um a term that we use is like in your body like a lot of people are out of their bodies and we have to get back in our bodies and when you when you get it's amazing like when you get back in your body and you realize you have not been in your body like most of your life and you realize like i had no idea that that's not how you're supposed to feel right? Because that was so normal. So it's a journey and it's a process, but it's definitely worth it. Yeah. It it makes me think about um, when we aren't breathing. So I feel like a lot of us are shallow breathing all the time. We're not actually stopping to take that deep breath. Um, And when you take that deep breath, it's like, damn, I haven't been, oh, my curse. Um, Sorry. Oh, on LinkedIn. For the whole hour I've just been sitting here doing what? I don't I don't know. Um, but there's one other question that I want to ask you. So there's this post that popped up on my feed, and my good sis Elizabeth Leba actually posted it. And it's a it's a quote that resurfaced actually from 2020. So give me a moment, I'm gonna pull it up. And it's from Raheel Tesmafarium. And Amanda Seals is actually the person who's doing like an overlay over over this, I guess it's a tweet. 
Um, and it says, can I get something off my chest? Black fame and wealth are not synonymous with Black excellence. Materialism was not our ancestors' wildest dreams. And social media influencers can't, nor should ever, be our guiding light and measure of greatness. 21st century Black excellence should be rooted in liberation of our people. Otherwise, it's just capitalism masquerading as the promised land. So because this show is A Black Woman's Guide to Liberation, I wanted to make sure that we pulled liberation into the, to, into the conversation. What are your thoughts on that? And I know we had some deep conversation about it, but I just want you to share with the audience like how it is that you feel about that. Do you agree with it? Are there some nuances um, that you feel? Yeah, before I jump on that, can I I want to add something. I I feel like we've been talking about liberation this whole time because mm -hmm. trauma, you know, living in a trauma state is like kind of like a prison, right? It's dictating, it's guiding, your body is tense. All these things are happening. We think it's normal and so we don't think it's, you know, the problem that it is. But again, like I said, when you come out of that and you realize like, oh my goodness, that's how I've been living this whole time, right? And so I feel like just in general, healing your trauma is liberating because the way you see the world completely shifts and it opens up so many possibilities. It opens up um, a new perspective of yourself, a new perspective of you in relation to the world, right? And so you're able to do things, believe things um, that you never thought before, that you never saw as a possibility for yourself because you were operating out of these coping mechanisms that were like keeping you small or keeping you, they were safety, but they were keeping you in these places. And so I believe that just in this whole conversation, we have been talking about liberation. So I just wanted to say that. But as far as the um, post, yeah, I feel that, um, I believe that I have um, started using this phrase that self-healing is community healing. And the reason I say that is because I have learned that when you heal yourself, um, a few things happen. You heal yourself and that healing, even if you have no intention of doing it, it ripples out to the people around you, the people who are watching you, the people in the house with you, the people who you work with, they, uh, your nervous system is different. Therefore, the energy that you're putting out with them is different. The way you interact is different. They see your mood be different, right? So it impacts in all these ways that we don't even realize is going to happen. And so I think when you take the time to liberate yourself, you are liberating the people around you because they might not have ever had an example of somebody liberating themselves until you decided to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And now that they have that example, they realize, oh, I can do that too. And then the other part is that I think, um, I believe in community. I am a huge proponent of community, but I do think that you gotta save yourself first. And then when you save yourself first, you know, I think, oh, especially as Black women, we are always trying to save everybody else before we save ourselves. And we are pouring from an empty cup. I wouldn't even call the cup empty. The cup been empty 10 years ago, right? And so we are like working on nothing, trying to save everybody else. And what are we talking? I said, yeah, fumes. Oh, okay. yeah, fumes, exactly. And that is so detrimental. And so I truly believe in community and everything, but also you do have to take a moment to heal yourself, to work on yourself, to give yourself what you need because you can't pour from nothing. You can't give from, from air, right? And so then you can do the community work. And like I said, even in taking that time for yourself, you're liberating somebody else. You're doing community work because people are like, oh, dang, I could take time for myself too. Asia took time for herself. I didn't know you could do that. You know, like I watch my son now and he'll be like, I'm just going to sit in here and read. Please don't disturb me. <laughs> I never could have said that to my mother. You know yeah. what I mean? And so like he totally, he's like, oh, he's got it. Right. And I didn't teach him that per se but he's watched me and he's learned that. 
And so um, I do believe community healing is vital. I'm sorry, community liberation is vital, everything, but how can we liberate the community if we aren't liberating ourselves? Yeah, absolutely. It's interesting because I, to, to go back to what we, um, to, to the post, I feel like when we liberate ourselves, we become free as we've talked about before. And a lot of those limiting beliefs that we've had before that have said, we aren't good enough. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can ask for this. I could never live there. I could never, whatever the thing is, I feel like when we liberate ourselves, we open ourselves up to abundance and the opportunity to have whatever it is um, that we want. And I think it's just important for us to like, be clear in the fact that liberation is going to look different for everybody. It may not look the same. And I think that's the reason why this show exists, because I have you here to talk about trauma recovery. You know, we may have someone talking about your breath as liberation or community as liberation. There's so many ways to think about how we can be, we can be liberated. Uh, but I really do love like community, liber collective, um, so, tell me what you said again. What I'm I'm messing it up. Community what? healing is liberation. Is community healing? Liberation is community healing. Self healing is community Self healing. healing. Is community <laughs> healing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I I think it is very important what you just said, and and it and it, that's something I say to people about trauma is that, you know, people want like this cookie cutter. Just tell me what to do, and it's like your journey to healing might be very different than my journey to healing. Now, yes, we have resources and tools and all these, but your experience was different than my experience. And therefore your healing journey is going to be your healing journey. And I think, you know, that's definitely um, how liberation is. You know, it's not the same for everyone. We all didn't come from the same places, the same spaces, the same experiences. And so it does look different for everyone. What you might feel is liberation, I might not, right? So I might be striving to something else and you might be good with that. And so we, I think when you get to a space of wellness, you can honor where everybody is and you don't have to feel like, well, we all need to be doing it in the same way, you know, looking the same way. Yeah, absolutely. The shaming, I can't do. Like I, yeah. I don't... I uh, want to feel shamed or shame other people because of how it is that they feel they've been liberated or what liberation looks like for them. Mm -hmm. So I am sure there are a lot of people who want to keep in contact with you. So can you share with those who are watching, whether they're watching live or their team replay, how they can connect with you? Sure. Um, I have my website, which is my name, Asia rutledge.com um, and that's where you'll find all the information about my coaching I'm on LinkedIn under Asia Rutledge and then you'll find me on the uh, other socials Instagram TikTok under actually healing de-schooled so it's um, de healing no, no space d-e-s-c-h-o-o-l-e-d <laughs> make sure I spell that right okay I got to get on TikTok and follow you. I haven't done that. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting more comfortable now. At first I was like, "Oh my goodness," but now it's like, "Oh, this is cool." So I'm having I'm having fun over there. <laughs> good, good. I love that. Well, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about trauma recovery as liberation. Everybody, um thank you for watching whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay. And please stay in touch here on LinkedIn and all the other platforms. Definitely follow Asia on TikTok uh, and reach out if you need anything. Thank you Thanks so much for having me. Of course.